Hi and welcome to another Tabitha's Glass Emporium YouTube video from sunny Croatia. Um, today I'm sporting my new beautiful mask designed by Sandra with our Marini on it. We're quite pleased with these. Um, uh, today I wanted to show you this little uh, idea. So this is using pressed glass. I've made a pressed glass background and then using this new product, which is on, on this, it says Sweetie Shop Mix, but I realise I'm going to call it Candy Shop Mix because that's slightly more universally understood. So using the, these to make beautiful pressed, very big wafer flowers and then incorporating them into a piece um, and making this beautiful kind of pressed glass piece. So I'm going to show you how to make this today. So we've got some amazing products that I want to show you today. I don't often do product based videos, but I'm going to today. Um, we've been collecting basically lots of pretties for about six months and I've been getting boxes sort of piled high with them. And then recently I started cutting them all up and then turning them into, into this. So this is like a hundred grams of the pink one. Let's see what you get. Lots of really pretty, pretty things. And we've got green, we've got a kind of an orangey, we've got a yellow, we've got a white, we've got a purple, rainbow. These are all in 100 grams. We've got rainbow that's in 50 grams. Also got these um, XL flower chips, which are really nice in 50 grams. We're calling them our sweet shop mix because they're a bit like bags of sweets. They're so yummy. And so I wanted to have a think about today what kind of projects you could do with them. Now, um... You could definitely flatten them and make them into wafers and I'm going to show you how to do that but then I had an idea of then how to incorporate that into a really kind of cool flower meadow by using um, uh, pressed glass techniques or flattened glass however you want to call it technique and um, we can have a look how that is and go from there. So the idea of this project is to make a base piece of glass that we're going to press. So I'm going to take a piece of tector. My piece is 25 by 15, but you know, whatever your size your kiln is or the frame you want to go in, or if you want to slump it, what mould you're putting it on. These are the things you should think about when you're thinking about what size you're doing. You don't want to cut a piece of glass that doesn't fit your kiln shelf. Um, so, the, you know, the sky, simple strip of blue, and then the base I want to build up with lots of strips of glass that are going to kind of run vertical in the piece that are then going to be pressed together so I just cut up a load of strips some of them longer some of them shorter and I'm going to kind of just build them up on the project now I'm not going to worry if there's gaps because the whole thing is hopefully going to press together and I'm not going to kind of worry too much about you know thinking about I'm going to put it exactly here and there um, I'm also not only using glass I'm using some of our floral stringers I've got some sort of fatter ones here I'm going to put them in as well I'm going to build this up and then we'll have a look before it goes in the kiln to be flattened. So here it is all ready and, um, and ready to go in the kiln. There are quite a lot of layers of glass going on here. I definitely always try and get a bit of contrast using some lighter glass with some darker glass so that there's a feeling of contrast. Just before I'm putting it in the kiln to go on, I have decided to scatter a few bits of um, sort of dusky violet frit on here just to add a little bit of extra contrast. Um, so that's going in now. I have a freshly kiln wash shelf here. This will need to go in the kiln on top of the glass, fresh kiln wash side down. So we put it down like that onto the glass. Now I have to think about this because it's going to have three kiln shelves um, in this kiln. So I'll have one kiln shelf, the green landscape glass, another kiln shelf, the flower petals, and then another kiln shelf. So that's quite a lot. That's two kiln shelves onto this green bit of glass. And I'm just concerned that's quite a lot of weight. I don't think it would squash very, very flat, but just to make sure, I want to put some spacers in to limit the thinness the glass can go to. So I'm using stainless steel kiln furniture. These are just dams I have sitting around. that can go either side of the glass to limit that it can only go to three millimeters and won't go thinner than that. So I'm gonna use those. If you don't have this, you can get some stainless steel washers from your hardware store. If you want to go slightly thicker than three mil, just stack them up until they're six mil and um, that can be your option. But I don't think it's, I'm going to need it, but just in case I want to put those in. On the next layer, we'll then put more thin fire and we'll do the petals. I'm not going to worry about putting this in because I want them to go wafer, wafer thin. I like my flowers wafer thin and so I won't bother with it, any kind of metal, just make them as flat as possible. So below this, I've got the layer, you can see it's very wobbly because the other layer is quite unstable, but once it all settles down, it will be good. So above it, I put some more kiln paper down and I'm just going to put these Marini and flatten them. So 
Um, in the hollow ones, I'm putting other marini inside. So like these hollow ones here, I've just cut a bit of, this is our sugar plum flour, put a bit of that inside these. And some of them I'm just going to squash as normal. Um, and some of them I'm going to put a bit of marini inside. I'll probably get another piece of marini to put inside this one. These I might just swap them, um, not, and just sort of have them as they are. Um, uh, and just see once they squash down and have a kind of um, a ring might be quite interesting to use in the flower meadow. So I'm going to put another kiln shelf, freshly washed, kiln side washed down on this. And then it's a very kind of quick firing. Um, I'm not worrying too much about annealing. I will anneal actually for an hour with this one because of the piece underneath, but I know I'm going to fire it again. So I'm not too worried about the anneal. So here they are, nicely um, squashed or pressed out of the kiln. Um, they work really well. A couple of them are joined together, but I'm not so worried. I can always um, just, you can cut it with a glass cutter. I'll show you in a minute. Um, I'm going to tidy clean these up. I'm lucky I have a sandblaster, so I'm going to do them in the sandblaster. If you don't, you'll need to soak them maybe in a vinegar mix to get the kiln wash off and then maybe use a diamond pad to go over them after that. Um, the lower level is this. I love this. It's not gone as flat as I wanted, but it's really got a very beautiful, um, I sort of love the softening of the edges you get between the glass because of pressing it. I really like that effect. We obviously had a bit of slippage of a piece of glass here, but I'm not so bothered about that. Um, so I'm going to again also sandblast this piece up and um, then we can have a look at it after that. So here this is all nicely sandblasted. I'm just going to wet it down so you can kind of see what it would be like um, when it's fire polished. It's got kind of really beautiful colours and I love this blurry feeling because of the pressing of the glass that you get. It's sort of just got a sort of a great um, feeling to it and mood to it. Um, I pressed a few other um, flowers the other day and I just wanted to show them to you. Um, these weren't even full, um, you know, uh, rings of Marini. They were just some scraps that I put together and they've come out really well. Some of them are stuck together, but if you just grind the edges afterwards, you can turn them into nice things. If you need to cut them up at all, just, here we go. I just, um, I tend to do them on the tarsal. But you can just as easily score and break and then you just need to grind off or if you've got a pair of mosaic cutters just you can nip off the edges I've unfortunately I've done that, that one's, these aren't coming together properly um so you can yeah create those or you can just be a bit more careful than i was and make sure you space them apart these things do grow if you're not going to put um, anything in to make sure to, to keep the glass from uh, the squashing flat when the temperature we're taking it up to it will squash to this which I love but it may not be the effect you're looking for if you don't want it to squash so much you can do like we did with this and put some metal in um, or you know some kind of spaces to make sure the shelf doesn't go completely flat so I've got this already I've got my wafers I want um, already as well and I'm just going to put them on I would say with this that I wish I had a little bit more sky. I wish I'd kept my green a little bit lower and had a bit more of the blue sky at the top. But that's sort of, um, those of you who are used to doing art, you'll know the rule of thirds where you should have third sky and maybe two thirds green or two thirds sky and one third. So it's a bit, this is a bit kind of small um, and will make the picture feeling a little bit um, bottom heavy. And also particularly because it's coming out in this bulge at the bottom. But that's as it is, and I'm going to keep going with it because I want to get this YouTube video done and out to you. So that for me is where I'm at right now. So I'm just going to place these down. I'm doing it upside down, so it's a little bit harder for me to tell how I like them. But I am choosing to kind of cluster like ones together. Um, might put one up like that. I don't want to put too many on. I want a few on. And then I'm just going to take some Marini. These are our white star marini and our pink marini. Now these actual ones are, are totally hollow. Um, lots of people kind of have like issue with hollows, but I think they can create a really beautiful flower. And if I wanted to, I could put a little stringer in the middle and create a flower with a different color in the, you know, um, different color in the middle. I'm not going to bother with this because I just want the kind of pink effect. 
So I'm just putting these around now. Now, the final kind of firing of this is kind of interesting. I quite like the idea of, the, of now firing it and pressing it again. So this all presses again and then fire polishing it. But I'm not going to do it this time. I'm just going to tack fuse this, which will nicely fire up, fire polish up and make all the glass shiny and bring out the colours beautifully. But we'll keep a bit of the... Um, the uh, the texture of the marini and the um, of the texture of the marini and the wafers. So I'm just going to put a few more of these on, and then think about firing it like this. I want to sort of leave an area of this green. I don't want to be able to totally lose this sort of amazing texture in the background by covering it up too much with marini. Um, I'm finding it quite hard. <laughs> I, I'm not very good at working upside down. So in a minute, I'm going to turn it around, have a look at it, finish off my design, and then I'll show it to you one last time before it goes in the kiln on a very light tack fuse. We've got six millimetres of glass here, so I'm not worried about any shrinkage. I don't think that's going to happen, but I want to keep some definition in the piece. So here it is in the kiln ready to go. I have decided to cluster the marini flowers into different colours. I just felt it gave a better kind of feel and structure to the piece. And I've added these green strings at the front. These are the thick ends of the stringers. You tend to get kind of a little bit of thick at the beginning of the end of the stringers. I don't know whether people have noticed with our stringers that they're two tones. So they're light on one side and dark on the other. So you can decide which side you want. I very specifically for this piece chosen all the light side. I want the light side to be seen. And this is a great use for kind of using up some of the end of the thicker stringers if you like thinner, thinner stringers in your projects. Um, but I kind of like keeping hold of the thicker ones and using them for a particular piece like this. So in it goes and we'll see how it, is, how it comes out. So here it is out of the kiln, all nicely fire polished and tack fused. And these candy shop wafers just look fantastic. I love these. They're such good value. You get so many um, out of a pack. Look, you know, that's a pack of 100 grams. Um, and, you know, you get masses. This is, in here, this is, I mean, two packs, I suppose. And look how many of these you get. And look at the size of some of them. I mean, the top that weight is nearly the size of the palm of my hand, some of them. And yeah, they need a bit of cold working. But if you had, um, hadn't been like I had, and if I'd spread them out better in the kiln, they wouldn't even need that. And all they need is a little bit of hand padding and they're ready to go. And they're so pretty. Um, so I really, really love how these come out. I'm going to probably display it in a stand, a wooden stand like this. We have these wooden stands made by a local carpenter. Um, that's a beautiful oak. It's, I need um, one with a slightly bigger hole routed in it because uh, with the stringers, it's a little bit thicker. But I love that string of detail. It's so just a little bit of texture at the bottom and the few little marini. And it's a fantastic piece with this, all this pressed glass. I think it looks beautiful. And I think it's turned out so brilliantly. Um, I hope you've liked this YouTube video. I know it's more of a product based one than I would normally do. Um, but if you have liked this video, please subscribe.